Hey Defenders, welcome back. So in the previous video, we covered how to ingest and parse through our Wazoo logs that Greylog is collecting. Now, I want to focus on the other side of the coin, and that is ingesting logs from our network devices, something that is as equally as important as collecting telemetry from our endpoints, right? We want to also capture and monitor what network traffic is coming into our network and going out of our network to spot any malicious activity. And also, you know, in the event of a compromise, maybe we want to see what other hosts are connecting out to our identified malicious IP address. And collecting our network logs is a crucial part to any seam stack as well. And so in this video, I have a PFSense firewall, which is a great open source firewall that you can deploy within your own home lab all the way up to enterprise level networks. Uh, but this isn't a video showing off what all can be done with PFSense. I am just using that as my network device uh, throughout this demonstration. So what we're going to tackle in this video is configuring our PFSense to forward its logs to Greylog. We are then going to configure an input on Greylog to receive those logs, and then also build our own extractors so that we can parse through the logs and they each have their own unique uh, data fields, which we will get into here in a bit. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Um, I have also written a Medium post. So for those wanting to follow throughout this video, I will link in the description below. So, all right, so a little bit of what the architecture is going to employ, uh, very, very basic here. We are configuring our, rather than sending our firewall logs to Wazoo, yes, you could, but I like to use just straight gray log to collect network logs and then write those into our Wazoo indexer rather than sending them through our Wazoo manager, building decoders and then trying to build detection rules to log that. Uh, I like to just plug them all into Greylog. Greylog will do our parsing for us. And then we can also in later videos, we'll add some threat intel around these logs as well, which is which could be done through Wazoo, but it is a little more complicated. I think Greylog makes it a little more easier and it's uh, and our Wazoo managers are also ingesting logs from our endpoints as well. So any processing that we can offload off of the manager and put somewhere else, um, I like to use Greylog to do so. Greylog will then, after receiving the logs and parsing through our logs, will then write it to our Wazoo indexer, which is very similar to what we've been doing with our Wazoo logs. However, also what we're going to do is create a separate index that these logs will write to will write into on the Wazoo indexer. So I do like to keep my network logs and my endpoint logs separated from each other. So we could, if we wanted to write them to the same index that our Wazoo logs are writing to, but firewalls and syslog messages are generally very noisy. So we may want to have different retention policies around, you know, how long do we want to hold these logs in storage for before we you know rotate them off to make space for future logs and it's just from a from a maintenance perspective it's a little easier and with gray log we can configure different index options for our network logs that we're receiving rather than just universally throwing it into the wazoo index so i like to also separate the network logs that we're ingesting from the wazoo logs as well so first, what we're going to do is spin up a input within Greylog. So we need to first tell our Greylog box, hey, I want you to listen for logs that will be forwarding from our PFSense device. So very similar to how we created our input for our Wazoo logs, we're going to do something very similar for our PFSense logs. So under system, I am going to go into inputs here. And what I'm going to do is select the the raw plain text UDP because I know PFSense is going to be forwarding these logs uh, using UDP rather than TCP uh, and this just depends on you know the network device that you're wanting to capture logs from if you are configuring for a different firewall just bear in mind to read up on how exactly the firewall is going to be forwarding 
logs to Greylog and what type of format that's going to come in because that's a consideration to make when spinning up your Greylog input. And then we'll also have to build extractors, which we'll get into here in a sec. So unfortunately, while syslog is like supposed to be a standard, um, I found time and time again that not all firewall vendors kind of follow that standard. And so the in the format that these logs are being forwarded in can vary from vendor to vendor. But Greylog allows us to build our own extractors. So it really doesn't matter. It'd be nice if everyone followed the same standard like they're supposed to. But unfortunately, that is just not the case all the time. So but we can adjust for that with Greylog's extractors, which we'll get into here in a sec. So I'm going to go ahead and select my raw plain text UDP. I'll select launch new input. I'll set it to global because I want it to spin up this input on the one Greylog box that I have. Uh, I'll give it a title and I'll just call this PF sense, uh, bind it to yeah, any interface. That's fine. And I'll change my port to, uh, I'll just do five, five, one, four. This, this can be any free port, uh, that you want. So my wazoo, my, our wazoo input is listening on 5555. So I'll just change this one to 5554, but just bear in mind that this just has to be a free port that is currently not being used within Greylog. And if you haven't deployed Greylog yet, go ahead and follow part two of our series, which I've linked in the medium post as well. So you can spin up your own Greylog server and then continue to follow along. So I'll go ahead and select save. We see that our input is now running. Of course, we're not having, nothing is forwarding logs to it yet. So now let's configure our pfSense device to forward logs to our Greylog box. So I've logged into my pfSense firewall here and I'm going to go into status. I'm going to go into system logs and then I'm going to go into settings and then I will scroll down here and go ahead and enable remote logging. Uh, do make sure if, if you're following this guide to the T and also have PF sense box, make sure your log format is set to BSD rather than syslog, because uh, that's what I built the extractors for uh, for this demo. We're going ahead and enable remote logging. Uh, I will say default is fine if you want to specify it to a particular interface, so, but I'm just going to default it to any. We will then configure our remote log server, which is going to point to our gray log box. So. I'm just going to go ahead and copy the public IP address of my Greylog box here. I'll post that then in there. And then we're going to follow it with our port, which is going to be 5514, because that's the port that Greylog is listening on. And then uh, instead of everything, I'm just going to select firewall events. I'll go ahead and select save. And now we should now start to see some network traffic hit our Greylog box. And yeah, sure enough, now we're getting some data starting to come through. So that's looking good. Our PF sense box is able to forward logs to our Greylog box. Now let's go ahead and actually set up a static field similar to what we did with Wazoo. And this will be important because this will allow us to configure a stream within Greylog that will route our PF sense logs to our PF sense index that's stored within our Wazoo indexer that we'll also configure here in a second. So I'm going to go ahead and select more actions. I'm going to select static field. I'm going to say log underscore type. And then for the value, I'm just going to say PF sense. So now every log that we receive, gray log is going to add our field name of log underscore type. And then in the field value of PF sense to every log that we receive. So now we can build a stream, a stream rule that matches only if a log has this value. So I'll go ahead and select add field. And now if I go into show receive messages, we should now see our log starting to come through as well. And sure enough, here we do. So I'll go ahead and expand this out a little bit so it's a little easier to see. So we see our static field now being added. So that's working appropriately. However, our block is kind of messy, right? Like it's really hard to read through this. So I see a TCP connection. Uh, I see the destination address and then the source address. But what we want to do is build a, a extractor so that these get mapped to their own key value pairs so that we'll now be able to build alerting. Uh, we'll be able to enrich it with our threat intel. And we'll also be able to build dashboards on top of this because I want to be able to parse through this message rather than just everything being written to this message field. And then it looks like that. That's, uh, that's terrible on the eyes and we can't really 
uh, do much with that. So what we're going to do now is build our gray log extractor. So I'm going to go back into my inputs here. I'm going to select manage extractors under actions here. I'm going to select import extractors and now we'll be able to add our own JSON block. You could build these extractors from scratch, but uh, I've gone ahead and done that for you guys already. So what we can do is just copy this JSON blob that's part of the blog post and paste that in here. And this will do our regex matching on the on the logs that we're receiving from our PF sense box and split them up into our various fields, field names uh, that you see above. This will differ from firewall vendor to firewall vendor, unfortunately. Like some firewalls, you can point straight to gray log and, and gray log has built in syslog extractors, but depending on the log format that your firewalls are sending, sometimes that matches up, sometimes it doesn't. So when it doesn't, we just have to build our own extractors and that's what we're doing here. So I'm gonna go ahead and say add extractors to input. And now if I go back into just my search here, what's gonna happen now is now if I select the latest log and I'll expand this out, now you can see we're getting our field names. So the PFSense device has passed this traffic. Uh, we get the destination IP address that this traffic is going out to. We get the port, the our source IP, we see our protocol, uh, we see the, the PFSense uh, rule number as well. So now we're getting all of our data that originally was stored within our message block. Now all that is getting parsed out to their unique field. So now we can actually do something with this data. So that's looking good. but we still see that our message is still writing to the default gray log index. And what we wanna do is configure a unique index where our PFSense logs will write to. So I'm gonna go back into system, I'll select indices here, and I will select create index set. I will give it a name, I'll just call it PFSense. I'll give it a description of PFSense. I'll do a prefix and I'll just do the I'll do the index prefix as pfSense as well. I'll leave everything else to the default. I'll scroll down and now for my index rotation. So this is also why I elect to having separate indexes for my network logs rather than my Wazoo logs because I can also set ro different rotation periods on these. So because I don't have much disk space on my Wazoo indexer, I'm gonna change to an index size, and I'll say a max of just 10, get roughly 10 gigs, just over 10 gigs, and I'll select, I'll change my retention strategy to, I'm just gonna say one. So I'm just, I'm going to keep one index that is a max size of 10.3 gigs. So once, once Greylog notices that the index has reached 10.3 gigs, it will delete that one and then make room for, and then create another one, an, a new index that will start fresh. So that'll help me save uh, disk space on my Wazoo indexer. But of course, you can configure this to uh, to whatever needs you may have. So I'll go ahead and select save. There we we see our index has been created for us. Now let's go ahead and configure a stream. So I'm gonna go ahead and select create stream and I'll call this guy just PF since logs. I'll just do a description of the same. I'll select my new index that we created. So this will be my PF sense index and I'll go ahead and select remove matches from all messages stream because I don't want this to log in two separate indexes. I want it to just go straight to my PF sense index. So I'll go ahead and select save. Now let's go ahead and configure a rule that will match on our static field. So that being our log underscore type field has to equal pfSense and nothing else. So you'll notice in our Wazoo ones, we say the log type must, it must match exactly Wazoo. So for our pfSense, we want to change this to pfSense. So I'll go ahead and select manage rules. I'll select add stream in field. We're going to say log underscore type. We'll leave match exactly to the same. And I'll go ahead and say pfSense. And then I'll just leave my description as blank. So I'll save. So like done. And now if I start the stream, we should see some messages start to come through. And yeah, sure enough, we got one message, uh, two messages per second. So we're now getting some data start to come through. And if I select my stream now and open up 
my latest message, we see that Greylog is now storing it in our PFSense index. And we can see the stream that it's routing to, which is our PFSense logs. Uh, if you haven't seen the last video, go ahead and check that out, which I'll pop up on screen. Now, uh, I go into a lot more of configuring the Grafana data source and building a dashboard. So that'll get you up and running there if you're kind of a little lost on why, on what we're doing within Grafana at the moment. So I'll go ahead, once I've logged into Grafana, I'll go ahead and select data sources. You see, I've cre we've created our Wazoo one already, but what we're gonna go ahead and do is create a new data, a, a new elastic data source that will only be for our PFSense log. So I'll go ahead and select Elasticsearch. I'll give it a name of just PFSense. Uh, I will point to my Wazoo indexer. I'll select basic auth and the skip TLS verify. My user is going to be Grafana and I'll select that in there. Now let's point to our index name, which if we're looking at here, it's going to be PFSense with a wildcard. So I'll say PFSense wildcard. I'll do no pattern. I'll remove the at sign within my timestamp. I will select my 7.10 because the Wazoo indexer is a fork of Elastic, which is 7.10.2 under the hood. So make sure you change uh, that there to reflect that. Uh, field name and level field name is going to leave blank for now because we don't have like any detection rules or like rule description fields within these. You know, if you're running like a if you're running an IPS or IDS, you know, you'll probably have a field on your on your firewall as well. You'll probably have a field that it's like, you know, this uh, whatever IDS rule that that traffic matched on uh, that that would be a field value stored within your logs as well. So that may be something good uh, to to hit on uh, in. In the future, we'll tackle Sericata, which is a great open source uh, IDS IPS where we'll get uh, we'll get more into that in later videos. All right, that's looking good. I'll go ahead and select save and test. Uh, let me make sure I did my password right. <laughs> I screwed this up in the last video too. I wonder if I did it again. Okay, yeah. Well, it looks like I'm two for two for screwing up the passwords. Uh, so now that uh, after saving and testing, you should get back an index of okay. So that looks like good. Now let's go ahead and explore our data. So I'll go ahead and select the logs. You'll see that Grafana has selected my PFSense log source, right? So make sure that your the correct log source is selected. And now we're seeing the, our firewall logs come through. So I see that traffic that has been passed, right? And we're getting our unique field names here. We're getting a little bit of the geolocation, which I covered in the last video as well. So, so make sure you follow that video as well so you can enable geolocation uh, just out of the box. And we're getting, we are now capturing our firewall logs. So our firewall logs are not only being captured by Greylog and written into our Wazoo indexer for our, you know, for our SOC teams viewing, also, but Greylog is also parsing out our unique field names, which is really helpful as well. And in the next video, we're going to cover how to integrate Greylog with Grey Noise, which is a IP threat intel lookup uh, service. They provide a, a really good API that we can integrate with Greylog to actually enrich even further our firewall logs that we are capturing. So what we'll be able to do is say, hey, based on this destination IP address, is this a known malicious IP address? And Greylog will reach out to Grey Noise and say, hey, what are your results on this IP address? It'll return back to us and then we'll populate our log with that metadata that gray noise responded back with. So, and that'll be great because that'll, that'll allow us to pinpoint potential, you know, indicators of compromise saying, Hey, why did this host reach out to this known malicious IP address and allow us to do that on the fly, but that will be for next video. So that's going to wrap it up for this one. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and I will see you in the next one.